Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslack, and I'm talking about reciprocity.com, the E is but with a three. And I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this particular platform, the sharing economy proofreading platform, because I really felt anxious about my writing, and I wanted to actually improve my writing dramatically and become a much more prolific scholar and writer. So I decided to create this particular platform and make it open to everybody and make it really easy to use for anybody that wanted to use it um, so that you can get feedback on your writing as well as become a much more prolific writer. So in this particular video, I really want to talk about different threats to internal validity and the one specific one I really thought was important I'm, this is part of a series that I'm doing is confounding or spurious variables um, and in first of all this is part of my nerd out Wednesday series where I put out a video about things that I just find interesting in science right I'm a professor so I like this kind of stuff um, the other thing is that this is this whole series, and, and I'm getting close to the end at this point, but I'm and the, as part of this series, I'm doing different threats to internal validity. And so what I'm going to do is go through, explain exactly what is internal validity, explain to you what is a confounding variable, and then suggest maybe possible ways to sort of mitigate those problems and, you know, sort of suggest possible ways of, you know, if you do have that problem, what do you do, right? So that's what this whole entire video is. So what is a threat to internal validity? So you could see, think of a research design. You can create a research design in any sort of possible way that um, you can, right? And you're basically just trying to find the relationship between A and B. And what internal validity is, is to do the degree to which this, uh, the relationship between A and B is being explained by your research design. So um, some of them, some research designs are not nearly as good as others in terms of coming up with sort of causal understanding of what's going on. And some of them are much better than others. And there's, there's a whole host of different ways you could do it. In fact, that, you know, there's basically you can do an entire PhD on creating different research designs and stuff like that. So, and some of them are really fascinating, really interesting. Um, and, and, you know, what they're trying to do essentially just rule out all these possible threats of, um, sort of problems. And these, these problems are, are called threats to internal, internal validity. And, um, and, and one of them, one of them that's really important is sort of confounding variables or spurious variables or spurious relationships that happen, right? So there is essentially, you know, two different ways that things can confound. The, the first one is, is that they're in, and they're really about a sort of another variable that's in interplay, right? So we're trying to explain the relationship between A and B or X and Y. And there's a, a third variable, you can call it either M or Z or something um, on the side. And that is causing a relationship is sort of either, um, it's either moderating the relationship between A and B, right? So moderation is either gonna make it sort of smaller, the relationship smaller and suppressing it, or it's gonna make it larger and make it more exaggerated um, when that, that other variable is there or to the degree that other variable exists. Um, and then the other one is a mediating relationship. And now what a median relationship is, is that instead of going from A to B, the relationship goes from A to the M to the B. And what essentially is happening there is that there is a, another sort of path that that um, can explain the entire relationship that you're seeing. And, and this, that's essentially what a spurious variable is, um, is that you're trying to correct for that thing that is affecting that other different relationship, right? And there's various degrees and then you can do that and all sorts of different sort of patterns they can do it. But basically you're trying to rule out that there is this other variable, this other thing that is causing the, the relationship. Now, um, you know, it's really difficult in terms of the, t the, so essentially to rule out the confounding variables or rule out spurious variables out of the relationship, it's really difficult, right? In terms of suggesting that, that you can possibly rule out all threats to internal validity, very, very difficult to do, even with the 
the most sophisticated uh, research, research design there is. There's always probably a threat to internal validity, and confounding variables is definitely one of them. Confounding variables, if you think about all the different things that can confound a relationship, right? It might be maybe you sampled um, different people, and maybe everybody ha is the same sex, for example, for whatever reason. Um, maybe that there is, maybe you're doing a lab study in the laboratory, you're doing a chemistry experiment, for example, and you forget to clean a countertop, and that can contaminate um, different relationships, and you're not going to be able to know, know that. Maybe you're at a you know, maybe your lab is, is maybe the study that you're doing is sensitive to atmospheric pressure and the lab that you're in is at one atmospheric pressure and it's going to be really difficult to go to another one. And unless you know that, um, to sort of vary the atmospheric pressure, unless you know that, you're probably not going to look into it, right? So that is a completely spurious relationship, confounding relationship that is causing that, right? A conf confounding variable that is causing that. Now, it's extremely likely um, confounding relationships are, are quite likely. And, and it doesn't mean that all um, uh, all of these kind of studies are, are, are this way, but and they're very likely in a cross-sectional sort of um, correlational analysis, right? So this is where, so maybe you are doing a survey, for example, and you send a survey to one set of people and you get the responses back from that one set of people and you don't do any sort of ways to mitigate or any things to mitigate the confounding variables. You just do a, a basic questionnaire, right? Uh, there's there's all sorts of reasons to to believe that there's something else that's causing the different relationships that you do, and you just sort of do um, correlational analysis between that. Um, there is, and and that's why you know that lots of people go through tons of sort of rigorous tests and stuff to rule out all the different confounding variables. Um, the other thing is that maybe the confounding variable is especially with sort of um, cross-sectional data maybe you're looking at demographic data and some demographic characteristic is causing a confounding relationship well it's hard to sort of capture that and to get at that so what a lot of people do in terms of mitigating the confounding relationships um, is they'll add a control variable. So you can control, if you're doing a regression analysis, for example, you can do controls for different genders, uh, or um, you know you can do controls for age, you can also control for, for anything under the moon, and um, you might put in that relationship in the correlational analysis, right? Um, and most, and any sort of relationship, any sort of study that doesn't do sort of more sophisticated research design is, is going to be sort of a cross-sectional, um, uh, it's going to be much more of a sort of correlational analysis, right? So when the ways that you can mitigate this, and this is um, more sophisticated, is you do start doing some, some you know, more... Um, rigorous testing or uh, re research methodology, such as a, a randomized controlled trial, right? Um, those are pretty rare at this moment in a lot of fields in the social sciences. It's starting to become a lot more pre uh, prevalent at this moment, though. Definitely a lot more prevalent. Um, in the sciences, it's a lot more easier to do that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, in, 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 in and it's been part of the sciences for a long time. And uh, we're just starting to to get into that in the social sciences, right? So um, some some areas are really picked up on this for the last while, right? So psychology has been doing randomized controlled trials for a long time, although there's varying degrees in how good they are um, in terms of methodologies that they ch choose. Because there's there's all sorts of different ways to do these randomized controlled trials. It's not as simple as you might think it is, right? So Randomized controlled trial, once again, I, I should probably pension, um, point it out, it's just an experiment, right? Sort of conventional experiment where you have a control condition, a treatment condition that is randomized across the different groups. Um, and then you see what the effect is uh, across the randomized groups. And you can randomize treatment across the groups. And um, 
So, so yeah, so, so that's how you can rule out some more of these confounding variables is through um, much more sophisticated research designs. There's a great book. There's a bunch of books about different research designs, but one that's really good is uh, Shandish uh, in its Cook and Campbell, Don Campbell, I believe. Uh, and, and they have a book from 2002 and it's all about doing research design and stuff like that. It's really good. Um, if anybody ever watches this video and they find that it's interesting, they want to find out, um, you know, just leave me a comment and, and I can post that in there. Um, but basically, um, yeah, so, so what you're looking for is just create some sort of research design that rules things out as much as possible and gets at the sort of confounding relationship. So it's, it's not possible that, uh, so basically you're controlling for any of these confounding relationships through the research design rather through sort of post hoc regression analysis after the fact, right? Um, and now what do you do if you have done all of this and you still have a potential confounding relationship? Well, um, first of all, you can try to model it through um, SEM, and uh, uh, structural equation modeling. Some people try to do that. The other way that you can do it, uh, sort of model it, is through instrumental variables regression. If you're more on the econ side and economic side, they do a lot of the instrumental variables type techniques, but the problem is the variables that you're gonna use as instruments in those regressions are still sort of predicated on you choosing the right instruments. Um, so there's still a problem with that sort of methodology. Um, ultimately, even though that there's there's these different methodologies, um, unless you don't choose, unless you, you know, if you choose this sort of incorrect research design or a research design, not incorrect, right? But a research design that has um, you know, lots of threats to internal validity, like just a, a basic cross-sectional survey, for example, or just a, you know, correlational analysis, um, something that you're looking at in the lab, um, you're going to ha probably have a, a confounding relationships there that are difficult to spot. Um, and so you just simply have to acknowledge it and put that into the limitation section, right? So it doesn't mean the study that you have is wrong. Um, in any sort of degree, you just report that that was a problem. Now, what it's going to do is if you're trying to get this published in better top tier um, journals, if you have sort of, um, you know, if you have that problem and you can't rule out confounding relationships, well, it's going to be harder to publish in top tier journals, but that's okay. You can publish in lower tier journals if you have those, um, you know, if you, if you still have that and it's an interesting enough study, right? So, um, Again, if you like these videos, if you want to learn more, just, um, you know, I, I can definitely help you out. Put some comments below and watch some of the other videos as well. I, I put out all sorts of stuff about innovation as well as the science-y stuff like this and writing, um, all sorts of things that are trying to be as helpful and as positive as possible. Because um, I just want you to excel. That's the reason why I created Reciprocity is to make sure that you excel and and you do wonderful with um you know with the things that you're doing right with your your writing or research or whatever it is that you're doing if you're watching this video so um thank you so much i do appreciate your time and take care have a wonderful day bye